Good evening, this is Tom, KB4HQA with the HQA Radio Sunday Live Show for March 4th, 2012. Good evening, and tonight we got a special guest on tonight. we got Don Arnold, W6GPS, from the AvMap Corporation, and tonight he's going to talk a little bit about APRS and the AV6, the AvMap product. Uh, let me bring Don on here. Give me a second. Uh, Don, how are you doing this evening? Hey, I'm doing fine, Tom. Just uh, we survived some uh, pretty uh, treacherous weather the last two days here in uh, Hamilton County, and I uh, do want to throw my prayers and uh, uh, concerns to people out there who are affected. Uh, just from my office, two miles from my office, we had a, a tornado skip over Chickamauga Lake, uh, hit a, a residential area, and did uh, extensive damage. So, uh, uh, again, my prayers and uh, and concerns for those uh, even to the north of us up in Kentucky and Indiana, where uh, there was a lot of uh, damage. So, and and I, and I will say that uh, APRS played a uh, a role in uh, search and rescue and uh, and just helping out the community out. So, uh, that's my uh, that's my uh, observance of uh, the weather for the last two days here and uh, on the East Coast. Yeah, we had a little bit of a scare um, last night. Uh, no, the night before, excuse me. I mean, wasn't it last night? Um, everything went to a little bit to the north of us and a little bit to the south of us and uh, heard some areas like Rome, Georgia, and down uh, above Atlanta and Alpharetta got a little bit of a scare. I don't know how much damage there was, but I didn't hear anything about any fatalities. But, yeah, Indiana previous got nailed, uh, Branson, Missouri. Uh, season still looks like it's starting out a little early, so uh, hopefully it won't be that bad the rest of the summer. Well, at Tom, it's um, it's good that uh, uh, the community can call on uh, amateur radio to uh, assist them in these types of needs. So, so tonight, what we're going to talk to is uh, APRS, and APRS uh, stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System. Uh, at one time, it was Automatic Position Reporting System, but uh, the author Bob Baringa he uh, he's uh, retroed back to automatic packet reporting system and uh, APRS is just another uh, uh, medium in amateur radio that uh, that uh, people can use uh, it's uh, something that's uh, fascinated me for the last uh, probably six or seven years uh, once I got involved with uh, AVMAP but uh, anyway that uh, uh, that is basically uh, APRS is a situational awareness uh, it's not just tracking. A lot of people think that you just throw an APRS uh, outfit in a vehicle and yeah, you can be tracked and my wife tracks me and I track my friends and yeah, it's uh, a lot of it is tracking, but uh, it's two-way communication. So uh, it's situation awareness. It's what's happening, an event that's going on, uh, maybe at like a marathon or for instance uh, uh, in these uh, uh, disasters, uh, resources can be called up, they can be localized, uh, they can be monitored on a screen, on a computer, on a network. Uh, in fact, if, if uh, people went to, uh, if they have another computer now, we don't want them to leave the show, but if they go to APRS.FI, uh, APRS.FoxIndia, and in the tracking window you could put my call sign W6GPS, and right now you can see that uh, I'm sitting at my house here in Chattanooga. But uh, with that, uh, that uh, website, you can track friends. And I've tracked a lot of my friends, uh, seen them across the country. And again, APRS is not just tracking, although that's what's used a lot. It is a, a two-way communications to where uh, you could send weather information, you could send statistics, uh, you can send messages. There's a whole variety of things that uh, uh, have evolved uh, since it was created back in the uh, late 90s. Now, the um, APRS, a lot of it is, um, it's all on one frequency. It's a, what, 144-390? 144-390, 144-80 in Europe, and then there's other variations. I think, I'm not sure what Japan is, uh, but... Um, it, it varies in different in different areas, but basic, basically it's two meter. It's on the two meter band uh, on the designated frequencies for that area. Okay. And uh, um, APRS works uh, 
also peer it works several ways uh, peer to peer in other words a radio to a radio uh, you can communicate uh, send packets back and forth uh, exchange information uh, you can also go through what we call a digipeter and we know what a repeater is is when we talk in one frequency come out another frequency simultaneously but a digipeter it transmits and it receives on the same frequency so uh, the information sends in a little packet goes into a digipeter it's held in memory when there's a, a quiet time it spits it right back out it could be just a couple milliseconds between uh, packet exchanges so you have a digipeter you have an eye gate an eye gate is a digipeter that has a gateway to the internet uh, that way uh, uh, this information it goes to aprs.fi uh, or findyou.com uh, can be uh, pulled out on the internet uh, you can do so you can see where your friends are at or your, the station that you want to track so uh, there's digipeter there's a um, eye gate which is a digipeter and then of course there's peer-to-peer -peer, uh, communications when when you're maybe in a search and rescue area and all of you are communicating kind of in a close circle and what um, uh, the inf what happens is is the, the the main thing is is my position right now is being picked up on a GPS that GPS has taken that information break its uh, serial in other words it's a combination of uh, uh, ones and zeros you, you might let's just say serial information goes inside the uh, TNC which is a terminal node uh, controller it takes that uh, serial information changes it into a couple uh, two, two audio frequencies I'll just say a one and a zero if because we're com we're kind of thinking like a computer and so it spits it out makes that <coughs> sound <laughs> and so that information is then it's an analog at that point it's being spit over the radio your other radio is picking it up uh, the outstation is picking it up. He's picking that analog information, that analog uh, radio packet, and it's changing it back into serial information. Uh, and it's taking my position that I've sent over. It's processing it and it's uploading it to a computer, to a uh, network, or in, in the in my case, the product that I promote, a GPS, to where you can actually see where I'm located. So that's how things are exchanged it's, a, it's an exchange of information and uh, other other things that can be exchanged is messages uh, packet messages I believe it's up to 63 characters um, your latitude longitude your altitude your course over uh, ground and your speed over ground so there's and your uh, your call sign which would be uh, your WPL information I hope that all makes sense to you um, uh, kind of rambling here just a little bit so uh, but that's basically uh, a little bit about APRS okay the um, now the AVMAP unit itself um, hooks up to a radio and um, the unit is actually a fully functioning GPS also besides being an APRS unit correct right. here's one I have right here um, and it's it's a, a four about a four and a half inch screen and um, uh, they're designed, they're built uh, in Italy, just outside of Pisa. Uh, I visited the factory, I've seen how they're made. They're designed, uh, the software is designed, the hardware is designed, and the hardware is actually manufactured all under one roof. So uh, uh, we don't specialize in mass productions uh, like Garmin or uh, TomTom Tom or Magellan. What we specialize is customized uh, GPS units. and. Uh, just talking as a navigator uh, in Italy, they have a they have a version that's a telephone and a navigator. They also have a farm navigator, which is uh, creates a virtual boom sprayer. So it's kind of a poor man's uh, farm navigator to where it will tell you where to spray uh, your chemicals or or the layout of your land. Uh, so it's kind of what they call niche products or customized products. But besides uh, these customized features that it has, it is a navigator. It's what I use to get from A to B. It's where I find my Starbucks, my BP gas station, uh, hospital, uh, millions and millions of what we call POIs or point of interest uh, are here on the uh, in the AVMAP. And uh, 
it's all right here on a two gigabyte uh, or excuse me a four gigabyte SD card so so that uh, it is just an it is a navigator uh, this version is the G6 uh, for people that aren't hams it also is a MP3 uh, player and an MP4 player uh, you could you could put MPEG4 uh, movies on here and watch it um, so it's kind of a combination of different functions it's a nice unit. I didn't. I, I honestly, I knew a lot about it. I didn't know about the uh, MP3 and MP4 part of it. So that's great. So right. it's a multifunction unit for the car. Um, you could have your kids watch a movie, or you could have it uh, listen to music, or uh, use it for the uh, for the APRS to track people. It's great. Like if you're going to a ham fest, say for example Dayton, uh, you could follow and see how many hams around you are beaconing as you're going to the ham fest. Um, and that's got a full fe featured map in it and could be zoomed in or zoomed out on, correct? That's correct. And, and, it, and you can get uh, routing by shortest, by fastest, a special uh, algorithm called AvMap Smart uh, Routing. And what it, was, what it does, because uh, in, in Italy and France and Germany, that part of Europe, there's a lot of uh, twists and turns in the roads. It will analyze that there's a lot of twists and turns in the roads, and it kind of takes that calculation and add it to the algorithm so that it could say well it's actually going to be better for you to go a different way than actually take all these twists and turns so that's kind of a um, customized feature that the AvMap has is uh, AvMap smart routing um, let's see this is uh, this has a very unique design I'll see if I can uh, show you that right there that's actually the GPS antenna right there but it's also a, a part of the mag mount and so um, there's a mag mount that fits on the back here to where you could just pick it up and put it on uh, the, it's powered uh, by these connectors mm -hmm. uh, see if you could see that uh, it's kind yeah, of it's almost like it's like an arrow pointing out of the surface yeah yeah there's like little contacts there there you go there you go there's a uh, some little uh, silver con or gold contacts, mm -hmm. and that way, that way you could just easily uh, pull it off the magnetic mount, uh, carry it with you, or put it in your glove box. So, uh, as far as navigation goes, uh, last year uh, we switched over to NavTech, and NavTech is based in Chicago, and uh, and we've gotten some very very good results with it. Uh, in fact, several customers that I've talked to uh, up in Canada and. Uh, and here in the United States have said, hey, there's roads here that have just only been here for um, for about two or three years. So uh, we, we do pride ourselves that uh, things are fairly accurate. But uh, let me just talk about, let me just talk navigation. Let me just talk navigation. Uh, no matter how new your unit is, uh, what, no matter who it is, what company, uh, at least 15% uh, is not there so so sometimes people people will, will will say well this one works better than this one because that road's there well generally the way that things grow in America so quick 15 percent of the real uh, road data is not there and that's that is true with teleatlas uh, which is a European based uh, data supplier and uh, navtech now, another thing that always, I'm just going to answer a few things here that I always get creeped up here, uh, just so that people know, is address, address uh, lookups. Address lookups, people think that, that, uh, that the address, every address is a pinpoint, like a point of, uh, uh, a point of interest, a point of interest like a, a Starbucks or whatever, but it's not true. Uh, there's two types of data, and the data that you see on the uh, internet, like with MapQuest and uh, and Google Earth or whatever, that stuff is dynamic and it's updated every every minute. And uh, there's there's two types of of uh, of coding for addresses. There's a uh, postal uh, coding, and that is a actual location, and that's a very very specific address lookup that. Uh, maybe a uh, surveyor would use uh, very very expensive data and and it's it's almost impossible to put pinpoint 
data of every house in the United States. So they use what they call theoretical postal coding. And you, you say, well, how, how do people get addresses? And so if you had a, a, a city block or a block that was maybe a thousand feet long, they break that up into postal codes, uh, kind of a, maybe it's 300 feet from the corner, so that would be 73001 or something. So that's what they call theoretical postal coding or theoretical addressing. Mm -hmm. So uh, people have to understand, you know, with a $100 GPS or for my case, a $499 GPS, that addresses are not going to be exact. And besides that, the data that you're getting, uh, and we're, we're talking navigation right now. We'll get to APRS, but let me just talk about navigation because I have to do a lot of research to answer these questions. Uh, the postal coding and a theoretical coding. Then um, uh, you have uh, atmospheric disturbances that can throw your GPS off 60 to 100 feet. So uh, I've never been able, I've never gotten lost traveling with with three brand names, they get me close enough to where I can say, yeah, that's where I want to go. But is it a, maybe 100 feet off, 1,500, or maybe uh, 150 feet off? It, at least it got me there. And uh, I feel more confident going into unknown territory uh, with navigation equipment today uh, than eight or nine years ago. So getting you there is, is statistically, they've proved that it's safer to use a, a handheld GPS or automotive GPS than looking on a map. Does that, all, does that all make sense to you? Oh, yeah. Makes perfect sense, yeah. So so that's part of the navigation part. Now, the, um, the actual APRS, this is a little bit more than just a standard APRS. This re sends, like when you hook it to a radio, it will receive the data back from other stations and that are beaconing also. That's correct. And if you're going to... Oh, if if uh, the folks will bear with me, I'm going to have to take and move my camera here. And I'm just going to give you a quick, just a quick look here. Excuse me. And Tom, you, you just tell me which way to go so that I'm not uh, too confused here. Okay, but yeah, you, it looks pretty it, good. Okay, this right here, uh, I've been collecting some APRS activity for the last uh, couple hours. And I can zoom in. And you can see this, uh, that little... Um, triangle right there that's me there's a weather station uh, to my north WX you got different icons to distinguish uh, different things we got a guy right here a car that uh, if you could see he's uh, he's uh, at 669 feet his course is 241 he's going 70 miles an hour his last report was at uh, oh probably about uh, two and a half hours ago and that was his uh, position. So that's the kind of information you can get. And uh, there's a weather station right here. Of course, the weather station isn't going to have any speeds and everything like that. Uh, we're hoping someday that we'll be able to take the weather information and actually display it. But that's the kind of information that you get from a, a uh, typical uh, APRS station. Uh, with the AVMAP, because it is a custom customized product, uh, it, it, it is the only uh, commercially produced uh, navigator that has uh, all these types of functions in it. So I'm just going to go in here to the APRS page, and I'm going to uh, go to Contacts Timeout. And the AVMAP has a, a way to where it refreshes the screen. I've set it for two hours. and what it will do is it will it will actually show me it will actually show me stations that are that have uh, beaconed uh, within two hours and mm -hmm. you can see this the screen is cleared up and basically I only got one mobile station right here. Don, move it over to the right. Move your camera to the right a little bit. There you go. Right there's good. All right. Um, so he he reported in at one minute uh, after eight. Now a feature that that I've had created in the av map is I could set this thing to target and uh, when I go to the screen there's my fixed point 
but you'll notice you'll notice right over here is a target and this is a flip screen to where I can actually flip to the station that I designated and that's great for uh, a balloon chaser or you're trying to keep an eye on somebody uh, you're you could set that to target and also on the side here I won't I won't change them but you can actually put his information uh, on the side of the screen here uh, let's see here Just bear with me folks <laughs> I could put target speed, and that's his target speed and uh, the station ID. So I'm watching this guy right here in a tactical mode. Now, if he was moving, uh, his speed would change. I can also set his course. So that's something that we have that's uh, customized uh, with the AV map. And um, let me just get back to the main screen there. Uh, I do have it tied to the. Uh, let's see if we can get the video to. Yeah, back up just a little bit. There yeah. you go. Sometimes it, it's kind of hard for it to get stable. Um, probably if I get it a little bit closer, it's it's looking at the black. On, that's why it's blowing out. Basically, I'm using a Kenwood 710. Mm -hmm. uh, plugs right into the side. Uh, the AV map comes with a uh, plug and play cord. Uh, plugs right into the AV map, right into the 710 or 700. Uh, it will also plug into a VX8, and um, and so there, my position was just sent out, and and there was an acknowledgement that my position went through the digipeter to let me know that I'm I'm hitting the uh, hitting the digipeter. But mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things that have gone into the uh, 710 which is kind of my radio preference for uh, APRS, is uh, you got a lot of features here, and probably one of the coolest ones here is um, this station right here. Right over here, he has his... Um, see if we can... There we go. Uh, it's getting a little too close. It's getting a little fuzzy, right? Right there's yeah. good. Right there's right. good. All right. Sorry about this, folks. But you can see that there's a, uh, a frequency right there. And by hitting the tune button, when I escape back out, I can actually see that's where he's actually transmitting. So that's a great feature that the uh, programmers at uh, Kenwood have designed. Uh, it's a tune feature. In fact, right now, as, I, as I'm beaconing, uh, it shows the status of what frequency I'm at. So that's, uh, that's basically a, a quick overview uh, here with the AVMAP uh, G6. Um, other radios, uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to reposition the uh, video camera. Not a problem. The, uh, the funny part was when you were uh, beaconing out there, one of, the, uh, one of the beacons out there was N4AC-9. Uh, I know Randall very well. He's right near me here. Oh, okay. So I've seen his call come across, so I think that was pretty cool. All right. Well, and, then, and that, again, that's, what, that's what's great about APRS is, uh, uh, oh, there's my friend. There's my friend Kevin, KI4LEX. Kevin's my uh, my uh, bud at work, and I can find Kevin. Kevin mm -hmm. can find me. Uh, he's he's followed me cross country. He knows exactly where I'm at. In fact, in my other office, when they were they were having a meeting, they said, "Well, where's Don at?" And they, and, and Kevin went to APRS.FI, put my call sign in, and right there in this uh, meeting, they could see, "Well, there he is, right there." Oh, he's going 85 miles an hour. We better talk to him about speeding. So, so I've had I've actually had people send messages to me saying you better slow down, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't know what the speed limit is in Arizona and uh, New Mexico where you can go 80 miles an hour with no problem. Yeah. But um, just a couple things about uh, people. Some of the ideas people get about APRS is is that no matter where you're going to go, you're going to be able to be tracked or you're going to be able to send a message, and it's just not true. You're at the you're at the mercy of three elements, three things that you're at the mercy. Uh, you're at the mercy of your equipment. Have I got my equipment set up correctly? Am I actually hitting a digipeter? So that is uh, number two, is uh, the network itself, the APRS network. Mm -hmm. And number three is, uh, is my GPS working or if I, am I having mechanical problems? So that's, that's, I would define that as user error or uh, operator error, and we all know about operator error stuff. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so uh, back to 
you're 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 at the mercy of the network. You're at the mercy of your equipment all talking together, um, and and some people they they uh, they've talked to me in the booth and they say, oh, I want to be able to uh, I want to be able to track my grandfather when he's going cross country. Well, there's there's plenty of dead zones out there, and uh, I mean I go I go to California and back at least uh, two or three times a year uh, um, driving, and there's uh, there's some black holes that. You're just at the mercy of a network, so. So uh, anyway, that's uh, th that's just a little bit about APRS and, and the network and things like that. So, um, I have right here uh, probably the latest radio that's come out. Uh, hopefully, you can see that okay. But that is a get uh, a Kenwood. That's a D72. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a built-in GPS engine. Uh, right up here, about about the size of a dime, and it's just amazing all the stuff that these GPS engines uh, can uh, pack in. In fact, my uh, my BlackBerry mm -hmm. it's got a, a GPS engine in there the size of my th my fingernail, and uh, and it's amazing how much uh, goes on. I'm not a math genius, but mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of algebra, a lot of trigonometry going on, mm -hmm. and some some people wonder. Well, how does it? How does this work? How does a GPS work? And um, I'll, I'll try to make it as simple as uh, possible. But uh, you have a, a whole variety of uh, satellites, uh, GPS satellites that are uh, that are going around, uh, uh, not geosynchronous, but orbiting the Earth. And uh, they're all sending out a beacon at the same time. They're all sending out information at the same time. And uh, if you were uh, if you were on a, uh, let's say, a, a thousand foot square and uh, there was a horn on each end of the square pointed right to you in the center and you hit the, somebody hit the horn or sounded the horn, that sound would reach you at the same time and it would tell you that you're in the center. So if you, if you were slightly off or slightly uh, in a different location, there would be sli a slight delay. And that's, that's the same thing that's happening with uh, GPS and location is all these satellites, they're all very, very uh, uh, precise uh, down to the billionth of a second. I mean, it's just unbelievable how accurate this is. And so when it receives a signal, it's anticipating a, another signal, another time, and there's some delays, time delays there. And by calculating those time delays and anticipating when the next uh, signal is going to arrive, then that is going to... Uh, uh, tell you exactly where you're at. That's a very, very simple, simpleton answer. So, uh, uh, but it's very, very precise. Uh, very uh, interesting how it all has been developed. And our consumer GPSs are, are fairly accurate. 60 feet is a pretty good. But you have military grade uh, GPSs that have encryption. Uh, they they have a smart bomb going to its target, and it's going to get it within uh, uh, millimeters. So that's very very precise. That's a whole different uh, that's a whole different category of GPS. Well, yeah, the amount of uh, technology is uh, you know it's always going to evolve, and sooner or later it trickles down into consumer grade where it's not as expensive as what the military would pay for some of the stuff they're using for. So. But, um, but yeah, so far the AdMap sounds like a, a, a neat product and everything. And you're mentioning, uh, you know, I know the D710 is, you know, in a lot of people's mind, the radio for APRS. Um, now, they, um, there's other radios like the Yaesu FT350, the G, um, the VX8, I believe. Uh, one right. of the models has a GPS built in. Now, say you, you could hook, uh, say, how would you do this with, uh, Say any radio. I mean, I know okay. we used to well, use uh, TNCs and a mobile radio, and sure, you know, what just you could do a GPS. Is, what you could do is, um, is you could get yourself a, ti a Bionics Tiny Track um, TNC terminal node controller. That's where you program in your call sign, um, whether you want it to smart beacon or. Uh, or beacon on a time. There's a whole variety of things that Bion has built in the TNC. And so you can actually connect that to uh, uh, a very basic radio. 
This is a this one here is a Kenwood, uh, just a two meter five watt radio, and uh, and basically you could transmit uh, uh, with any radio. Uh, there are there are pros and cons, so I want to start from uh, I want to start from the top. Uh, this is by no means uh, bashing anybody's radio, but uh, I have tested it. Uh, the AVMAP with a variety of different radios uh, with a Kenwood 710 uh, the Kenwood has and the D72 they have a what they call a Kenwood sentence and the Kenwood sentence um, uh, sends out uh, it, it kind of uh, streams out the uh, latitude longitude the call sign the time that was uh, created what type of icon it was and that's how you get the different icons on, on the AV map. And so we've built in our software when it sees the uh, PKW or PKWD WPL uh, waypoint, uh, then it's, it, uh, um, um, our, pro our AV map processes it so that the ID of the uh, icon is established and all these other tactical information that I showed you. Uh, the uh, open tracker um, does use a Kenwood type sentence and you get the same effect as far as uh, the icons are concerned. And you can put the open tracker on any radio. Uh, the tiny tracker 4 uh, has this uh, format that we're talking about and uh, you can put that to, uh, to any radio. Um, but with the, um, with the uh, tiny tracker here um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to uh, just hook it up, hook it up, and uh, it's just now acknowledged uh, a beacon. But what it will do is, is I'll be able to uh, send a message, and hopefully my buddy Carl up in uh, Cleveland, uh, will, Ohio, will be able to get this, and so uh, I can actually. Excuse me, I'm going to take the camera again. Just bear with me. Mm -hmm. But I can actually take uh, and spell out a message right here and have it sent out on the virtual keyboard. And this is this is if you're using a Tiny Track 4. Now, going back to my radios, going back to my radios now, uh, the... Uh, D72 reacts the same way as the 710 has the same type of uh, has the same type of uh, TNC. Uh, the D7 and the D700 uh, uh, those are older radios. They don't use the Kenwood sentence uh, that wasn't developed back then. They had their they had a different uh, way of doing it. But you're only going to get uh, uh, a call sign and only two icons, and that's because it uses WPL sentence, and then digressing down or going down to a VX8. VX8 does not have a Kenwood type sentence. It uses just a NEMA sentence, so it's only two icons. And same with the, uh, the FT350. Uh, I was able to borrow one and use it. Uh, it did work, um, but you don't get all the uh, different icons that uh, uh, the Kenwood sentence uh, pr produces. So there there are some uh, differences. There's pros and cons. If a guy says, I want to do APRS and I want it to work the best for me, then it would be a 7. And messaging is not a big, big factor. You can message with a 710. You just have to use the keypad uh, to enter your message or, or dial it in. Uh, but if messaging is not a factor and you want all the tuning features and all the other features on the 710, uh, then that's the way I would choose. If the guy says, hey, I just want a basic radio, basic APRS, and he only wants to spend maybe $100 or $200, then you just get yourself a basic radio, a Tiny Track 4, or an Open Tracker. Uh, I will say that the Tiny Tracker 4 does have that messaging capability uh, that our engineers have uh, worked out with uh, Bion. And then uh, Open Tracker will not give you that messaging ability. You can, by the way, hook up a computer to all these devices uh, so you can send a text message uh, it's just a little cumbersome uh, carrying the computer inside the car so so those are just some of the uh, different varieties of, uh, of uh, APRS uh, devices now besides the uh, APRS uh, using uh, RF like what we're using 
Uh, there's the uh, network capabilities, people using their Android phones, they're using their smartphone phones, they're using, using Windows CE products. Uh, so there's a whole variety uh, outside of the RF environment that uh, uh, APRS is used. Uh, I know one, uh, one group uh, that has taken APRS uh, on their military frequency in the event of a hurricane or disaster, uh, they uh, have, have a form of APRS on each vehicle talking back to each other. They, they process that information. They send it up through a, a military satellite and, uh, and the governor or the military uh, force for that state can actually see those resources deployed. Uh, APRS uh, uh, calculations are very, very precise and uh, it's a very extraordinary uh, uh, algorithm or process to get that localization uh, down to just a couple feet. So very, very precise. And I hadn't even touched on it, but APRS is used in uh, tracking, uh, tracking uh, satellites. Uh, the International Space Station has APRS on it. Um, a lot of times I, I can go to the website, find out where the uh, uh, ISS is going to be uh, in my area. Uh, I can also um, listen for it on the, uh, on the downlink. And uh, long before you could see the satellite, uh, the International Space Station coming over, uh, you can hear it on uh, APRS beaconing. So that's kind of a fun uh, method of communication and uh, tracking uh, using APRS. All right. Yeah, I've got. I actually got one question. I don't. Uh, so far, there's only been one question in the chat room, and that was taken care of. And you touched over it. Also, was the price on the unit? Um, D Star, the new DPRS. You could pick those stations up if you're looking on APRSI, APRSFI. Um, will the AVMAP show DPRS stations also? No, it will not. And I, I've, I uh, have experimented with uh, the, the newer D-Star radios, like an 880, uh, the um, uh, 80, uh, Handy Talking. Uh, the AVMAP uh, will connect to the uh, those newer D-Star radios that use the, um, the A mode, uh, mm -hmm. but it will not, it, it, it will only give you a position, in other words, a reference. The uh, D Star processes it uh, through the through its own internal network exactly. of where stations are location located. Mm -hmm. It is it is not possible for that WPL or that waypoint information to actually come up on the AV map out of a D Star radio. Again, this is a whole different medium. It's a whole different network, mm -hmm. and so uh, so. Uh, but I, I do know that there's some D-Star um, repeaters that are mirroring what's going on in the APRS uh, network. And so uh, they are, they're taking that uh, D-Star uh, transmission that's being processed at their local D-Star uh, repeater uh, and, and that gateway and actually transferring it over to transmit on 144 Three nine. There are several people that have that capability, but as far as uh, a person hooking up the uh, uh, AVMAP to his uh, his uh, newer D Star radio, the AVMAP will give a uh, latitude, longitude. It will give a reference, uh, speed over ground, altitude. Uh, the standard uh, GPS information uh, will actually go into the D Star radio, and it will. Uh, go to the D-Star network showing where you're located, but it will not show other D-Star radios or D-Star uh, uh, people on D-Star, I should say, uh, on the screen. So it's it's a whole different it's a whole different critter. It's a whole different animal. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's why. <clears throat> excuse me, that's why I thought. Okay, no, that's um that's that's exactly what I thought would happen because it is a, a totally separate uh totally separate uh, infrastructure instead of just being on a set frequency it's on their internal network uh, but like I said it I know it does translate over to APRSI if they look at it but 
it's just the you know the position reporting. But no, that that's good. Um, anything else about the AvMap products that you want to go over? Well, uh, of course, AvMap was uh, its first was born out of uh, aviation, and uh, they do have a, a great reputation as a aviation product. Uh, they're constantly developing that. Um, the uh, uh, this version of the AvMap, the G6, uh, it's it's got a longer battery life uh, than the predecessors. It uses Windows CE, so it's a little more efficient. Uh, before it was using a very proprietary um, operating system that it uh, was just hard to to be able to add these features to it. Um, I'm I'm I guess I guess I would say that it's it's very unique. It's a very unique uh, product, and that uh, I I pride myself. As far as representing a company, that when you when you purchase an AvMap product or AvMap G6, you know you get a piece of me, so to speak. Um, all my emails and tech support go right to my phone, and if if someone's having a problem, and and I know many will tell you that I'm right there to uh, to answer their questions. Uh, if I can't get an answer, I'll research it, but uh, I I take pride in taking care of our customers. It's it's virtually foolproof. Uh, it's very easy to set up. Um, I I have very very confidence that uh, a person uh, can get an APRS um, and really enjoy it. It's mm -hmm. it, instead of a audio QSO, it's a visual QSO. That's how I look at it. You could say, oh, look at all this activity going on, and I mean I have people uh, coming uh, to the AvMap booth saying, oh, where, where was I last beaconing at? Where am I at right now? And, and, it, and it is a very unique uh, medium of amateur radio. And besides uh, just the fun of tracking and, and messaging and things like that, when it comes to search and rescue, it is it's very valuable. To, APRS is a very, very valuable tool. Uh -huh. And so uh, not only do you get like road navigation with the AvMap, but you also get uh, this plug-in Plug and play, not plug and pray. Uh, uh, compatibility, uh, especially with Kenwood radios, because uh, we've worked hand in hand with them for the last uh, six years. Uh, basically, uh, when they come out with a new product, we're right there, seeing how it's going to work, and uh, we're able to uh, uh, piggyback off their features and try to uh, make our product com compatible. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm uh, I've been doing this now for about uh, six or seven years. Uh, there's always things to learn. There's plenty of there's plenty of uh, of uh, things to learn about APRS uh, that I'm just touching on a very small small facet of it. Yeah. And so uh, Bob is very very adamant about uh, messaging and being able to have two way communication. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you're at the mercy of the network. If if the if someone were to send me a message right now and I hadn't beaconed, the network wouldn't know where I'm at. And also the uh, the Digi Peter or the uh, in this area, he may have restrictions to where he doesn't have outgoing messages. But as far as peer to peer sending a message, it's it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, uh, let me go ahead and uh, I'm just going to try something here. Okay. It's going to be real quick. All right, while you're doing that, I'm going to see if there's any uh, anybody in the chat room. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, shoot them over, and we'll talk. We'll see if we run them by Don for the next uh, couple minutes. Um, also, the um, the um, I know you'll most likely be at uh, Huntsville and Dayton. Uh, one, any other ham fest coming up uh, shortly that you'll be at? Uh, that's basic. That's basically it. Is uh, Dayton. Uh, see, I go to Orlando. I've been to Orlando. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be at uh, I'll be at uh, uh, Dayton up uh, up in the North Hall by uh, wherever wherever where the Gordon West. I could just say I'm just down the road from Gordon West. Okay, I know so, where it'll be. Yeah. And so uh, and also I'm down the road from Bayon uh, mm -hmm. and Huntsville. I'll just be in there uh, 
as always, those are those are good shows for uh, for me to uh, to go to because they're close. And and uh, uh, I went down to Dalton last week. Uh, and it was just uh, t- you know just down the road. So, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, you know, people can contact me. They can go to my uh, uh, the the parent company is uh, www.avmap.us. Uh, internationally, it's www.avmap.it, uh, and then uh, I've I've got a website to where it's more geared towards uh, towards uh, AP, APRS and the AVMAP uh, as a APRS tool, mm-hmm. and that's uh, www.geosat.us. And then also I have a, a YouTube channel where I do demonstration radi- uh, of, of some radios. And also, I do demonstrations for AvMap, and uh, that's uh, YouTube.com forward slash W6GPS. And you can always just put W6GPS in a in your search uh, window. And uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty popular person out there on the internet, so uh, you could track me down that way. And I guarantee, you, if you send me an email, I'm going to answer it. If you buy an AvMap, uh, you get me uh, you get me for tech support. Uh, we do have an 800 number, uh, and and my folks up there in Massachusetts, they're pretty good about answering questions, but sometimes they just get stumped, and uh, mm-hmm. they they send them on down to me. Uh, I will say the AvMap uh, G6 uh, does have a two-year warranty. Uh, we're we're we are we take pride in our equipment, and we stand behind it. We we know it's pricey, we know it's uh, um, it's not a hundred dollar GPS. But no other GPS really does what our our system does. Yeah. Uh, you can get other GPSs, and then you have to build a translator or buy a translator and have something that's intermediate. Uh, but ours is a standalone APRS tool and a navigator. Uh, we, we take pride that uh, uh, it's it's custom made mm-hmm. uh, with tender loving care, as my uh, CEO uh, Simone in Italy would say. Yeah, I got a chance to play with the five and the six. Uh, when I worked at the store down in Atlanta and uh, calling you guys for any questions that we needed to for, to answer for a customer, your uh, your support is right there. So that's not an issue. Um, okay, I don't see any uh, questions in the uh, chat room, probably because you pretty much went over a lot of stuff. Uh, we've been going for 50 minutes now. So uh, what I'm going to do is if you have any final uh, comments, uh, we're going to start wrapping this up. Okay, Don? Well, all I could say is... Um is APRS is a very, very uh, interesting uh, form of, of amateur radio. It could be very, very useful, uh, not just as family, as a family tool. Uh, I know a, a ham family that they've got three boys, a husband and wife. They're all hams. They're all extras. They all track each other. They all have av maps. They all know where they're at. Uh, but also for community service and search and rescue. Uh, for uh, being able to locate uh, where other stations, amateur radio stations on the APRS network in a search and rescue. Um, It's a very, very uh, valuable uh, facet of amateur radio. And uh, as far as the AVMAP goes, we uh, pride myself to let people know that we do make a good product and we do stand behind our product and when you purchase the uh, the G6 or, or whatever the next generation of AVMAP is, um, you get me, and I'm there to help you out. And even if you're having a problem, even with your Kenwood radio, or don't understand, I support the uh, Kenwood products uh, to help you understand what's going on. If you have a 350, I understand how a 350 works. Uh, basically, I know how it hooks up to the AVMAP. And so I'm I'm here to help you, uh, you know, make the uh, jump into APRS as a fun and uh, useful tool of amateur radio. Okay, great. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, sitting out there in the car and doing the demonstration. That's great, especially I know it's a little chilly there in Chattanooga. So you most likely got the car running and the heater going. But, Don, I really appreciate you coming in here tonight. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish it up if you want to hang on a second. And, uh I'll finish and close up the show, and then I'll be right back to you, okay? I'll stand by. All right, Don, thanks a lot, and 73s, okay? 73s. All right, that was Don, W6GPS with AvMap, and uh, 
Hopefully he answered a lot of questions and went over stuff. If you have any other questions uh, later on that you come across, you may want to do, or after you watch this video, uh, if you don't watch it live, this video will be up on uh, www.hqaradio.com forward slash HSL, um, uh, and, uh, and which is the Sunday live show. You can watch that, you know, and at your leisure there, and that should be up by Monday evening, which will be tomorrow evening. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank Don for showing up and talking about the Abmac product. Uh, this is Tom, KB4HQA, and this has been the HQA Radio Sunday Live Show for March 4th, 2012. Uh, I'd like to, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for watching and everybody in the chat room this evening, 73s.